we'll discuss today about external carotid artery and its branches. The external carotid artery arises from the common carotid artery. It begins at the upper border of the thyroid cartilage, passing upward and slightly forward, and then, when finds the angle of mandible, inclines backward to the space behind to the neck of the mandible, where it divides into the terminal branches, the superficial temporal, which continues upward to the temporal region, and the much larger maxillary artery, which arises at a straight angle, passes medially to the neck of mandible and is directed anteriorly in the infratemporal region towards the pterygopalatine fossa. Apart from these two terminal branches, from the external carotid artery, as it travels upwards, are arising six collateral branches. Five of these six collateral branches are arising in the carotid triangle. We will put down the carotid triangle, which is bounded anteriorly by the posterior belly of the gastric and the superior belly of homohyoid muscles. Very closely related to the posterior belly of the gastric, we can also put down the stylohyoid muscle. Posteriorly, the carotid triangle is bounded by the anterior margin of sternocleidomastoideus. Now, let's indicate the six collateral branches of the external carotid. As I've already mentioned, five of these six collaterals are rising in the area of carotid triangle. We'll indicate using the green color the ascending pharyngeal artery. This artery is the smallest branch of the external carotid and is a long slender vessel directed towards superior. It arises just superior to the bifurcation of the common carotid. As it ascends on the lateral wall of the pharynx, gives off pharyngeal branches. Superiorly, become continuous with the inferior tympanic artery, which will supply the middle ear. From the ascending pharyngeal also arises two small arterial twigs. One will pass through jugular foramen and the other will pass through hypoglossal canal. These two small arterial twigs are neuromeningeal. They will supply adjacent neural and meningeal structures after reached the skull via these foramens. The superior thyroid artery arises from the external carotid artery just below the greater corner of the hyoid bone and ends in the thyroid gland, usually by splitting into two main glandular branches. The superior thyroid also gives off collaterals, like infrahyoid artery, which passes just below the inferior margin of the hyoid bone. The sternocleidomastoid branch is directed posteriorly and will supply the sternocleidomastoideus. The superior laryngeal artery, which will pierce the thyrohyoid membrane, and the cricothyroid artery, which will descend towards the cricothyroid membrane. The lingual artery arises from the anterior aspect of the external carotid, just superior to the superior thyroid artery, it is directed anteriorly and superiorly towards the tongue. First passes deeply to the hyoglossus muscle, and after giving the sublingual branch for the sublingual gland, it becomes the deep lingual artery, also called the ranin artery. Apart from these arteries, from the lingual artery, we have the suprahyoid artery. This branch is given off just before the lingual artery enters deeply to the hyoglossus muscle. Lastly, from the lingual artery, we have also dorsal lingual branches. Using the blue color, will indicate the facial artery. The facial artery, known classically as the external maxillary artery, arises in the carotid triangle a little above the lingual artery, passes obliquely up 
beneath the digastric and stylohyoid muscles, and then arches to enter a groove on the posterior surface of the submandibular gland. It then curves upward over the body of the mandible at the anterior inferior angle of the masseter, passes forward and upward across the cheek to the angle of the mouth, then ascends along the side of the nose and ends at the medial commissure of the eye under the name of the angular artery. In the cervical region, the branches of the facial artery are the ascending palatine artery, the tonsillar branch, the submental artery, and numerous glandular branches for submandibular gland. In the facial region, the branches of the facial artery are the inferior labial artery, the superior labial artery, the lateral nasal branch, which will supply the nasalis muscle, and, of course, the angular artery, which is the terminal branch. The occipital artery arises from the external carotid artery opposite the facial artery. This artery supplies blood to the back of the scalp and sternocleidomastoid muscle. Also supplies some deep muscles in the back of the neck. After ascent under cover of posterior belly of diastric and stylohyridose muscles, enters a groove located medial to the mastoid process and then passes backward and upward, pierces the fascia connecting the cranial attachment of the trapezius and sternocleidomastoideus and ascends in a tortoise course in the superficial fascia of the scalp, where it divides into numerous terminal branches. Apart from these terminal branches, we have a sternocleidomastoid branch, an auricular branch which supplies the back of the ear, the meningeal branch of the occipital artery supplies the dura mater in the posterior cranial fossa. This branch enters the skull by way of jugular foramen or the condylar canal. Lastly, from the occipital artery we have a descending branch which is the largest branch. This branch divides into a superficial and a deep portion. The superficial portion will supply the trapezius. The deep portion will anastomose with the vertebral and with the deep cervical artery. Using the orange color, we will draw the last collateral branch of the external carotid artery. The posterior auricular artery arises from the external carotid artery outside the carotid triangle above the digastric and stylohyoid muscles, just opposite the apex of the stylohyoid process. This artery gives off the stylomastoid artery, small branches to the auricle, and supplies blood to the scalp posterior to the auricle. Apart from these six collateral branches of the external carotid artery, as I've already mentioned in the beginning of the video, we have the two terminal branches the superficial temporal and the maxillary arteries. The superficial temporal artery terminates in the temporal region by way of a parietal and the frontal branch. Before giving these two terminal branches, from the superficial temporal arises the transverse facial artery, the zygomatico orbital artery, the middle temporal artery, and some anterior auricular branches. The branches of the maxillary artery I have already described in a separate video which you are welcomed to watch on my channel.